The Conceited Nobody. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, what's up, what's up? We back with another edition of the best podcast you never heard of. The Conceited Nobody. Here you go. Trey J.B. Roy. I got you, bro. I got you. Like Dennis Rodman. <laughs> The most dangerous podcast you've ever heard of, the Casino Nobody. This is episode 130. Um, sorry for the delay. Damn, 130. That's crazy. That's crazy. 130. <clears throat> we back up in here, though. We're about to have a fantastic show. Shout out to the whole squad. You already know how I am. It's Latours, a.k.a. the low-key legend. Uh, to my right, we got Renaissance mother... You're out of your enemy. Motherfucker yeah. Juvie in this motherfucker, man. <laughs> I thought he was hey, Juvie on here and shit, man. Listen, he got the polo pants. Hey, he on here fly. Cozy. They, they call it cozy. Cozy. <laughs> on everything. Like, hey, on everything. Like, he said there's some, like, there some watermelon on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Juvie in this motherfucker, man. Renaissance Juvie, the man will make shit happen. Yeah, to right. his right, we got the funny man of the team. The... I be calling Juvie Renaissance Juvie because he makes shit happen. He he got a lot of shit going on, but low key Jason he Renaissance ass nigga too. Why you say that? Jason, because you got, you do a lot of shit, then you act, you rap. Oh you okay. Right. Look, I Jason thought it was the inside. That nigga got some compliments. Nigga, I know what the word from. Renaissance man. I was like, what do I do? Hey, man, <laughs> we be I be, be trying to be focused. I'm trying to be like y'all. And, and he's off. He's awfully humble. To his right. Listen, man, I really could have ran this this whole panel. <laughs> I could have ran this on this whole yeah, panel. Yeah. The DJ extraordinary, D, extraordinary DJ T-Rex in here. Um, how y'all feeling, man? Nice. Feeling pretty good, man. I've been, been resting like a motherfucker, man. Man, with well, shit, kind of been still kind of doing a lot at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know, man, it's weird. But I've been kind of shit, staying out the way, shit. Bullshit. Low key, low key. Pretty much, yeah. Just trying to uh, stay busy and stay out the way, like Juvie said, yeah. man. And, you know, uh, dodge the Rona, you know. Dodge the Rona. <laughs> hey, that's a hell of a dodge hashtag. The dodge the Rona. Dodge the Rona. But we up in here, man. I'm really trying to share this link. Uh, we'll we up in guy. here. Who mentioned Rob? Man, who said something about Rob? Man? Was, it, was it you? Was it? Was it you? Anyway. Somebody said something about Dennis Rodman. That's the way oh, we yeah, go. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I said, yeah, you got read Dennis Rodman. Yeah, I said that. That's how we're going to start off this show, talking about something that has something to do with Dennis Rodman. We, um, first off, man, this is an action-packed show. We're going to kick it off talking about the last day in the docu-series that's on ESPN, centered around the last uh, year of the Bulls dynasty, 1997-98 season. Uh, it was the best of times, the worst of times. Worst times if you hated the Bulls. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's a fantastic series. We're going to talk about that. We definitely going to talk about um, some things that's really percolating in the uh, country. It's something that's, that comes and goes. A lot going on during the quarantine still. Something that comes and goes is the uh, police brutality. It's like a cycle. It do. It, kind of, it literally, like, it's, God, it's a wave. It's like a wave. It's like a wave. It's a season now. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. Like, it's like open season now. <laughs> and then they're going to close it. And then it's going to be open season again, like another maybe like three years or a couple months. I don't know. Like, why like, season? Season? I was just thinking that shit. Duck season. Why season? No, nigga. Nigga season. I feel like that shit happened. I swear you took that shit out of my head. I feel like that shit happened every day all the time. It is. It happened, all, it happened every day, and it's something that's been happening every year, some consistently or whatever. Uh, I don't I don't really get how we always shocked and surprised when it happened. What we talk about, we talk about the slang. Like, I don't even want to call it uh, they don't like us. the slang of Sean Reed and Amal Aubrey. Amal, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Amal Aubrey, that took place in... Was it, where was it? Bro, was it Brunswick, Georgia? Uh, it was in Georgia. It was in Georgia. Sometimes sure. you feel like sure. Atlanta. Like Atlanta's the only thing in Georgia. So disrespectful to everybody in Georgia. It happened in Atlanta. Georgia's so big. Shout out to Georgia. But shout out to him. Uh, and then Sean Reed, he was killed here in Indianapolis. It's crazy um, for whatever reason. I don't know who 
like who's all in tune with what exactly happened with these situations. But before we get into the heavy stuff, we definitely gonna talk about um, the light stuff. And that's the Bulls docuseries. We won't stay too much on this because we got to a late start. Um, this is the first time that I've been caught or current on the episode. As we were talking about off air, so it's the most incredible shit I've seen as far as the docuseries in a long time. Maybe ever. It's, it's unique but remarkable for me because I grew up in this era where we was out here checking on Michael Jordan, uh, the whole the whole myth of Michael Jordan. He's the closest athlete that we've seen live up to their myth as far as the uh, as the games go. Outside of like bad games he had um, when he came back against the Pacers after his first retirement where he went 7 for 28. When you sit back and think of when you grew up watching this era of basketball, it's hard to think about when you were miss shot, miss shots. Yeah. Cause it's like when he got on the streak, it just got so deadly. We can think about like when all stars had bad games, but Jordan, he never, it's like he never had a sustained period of a bad game. What you, what you think about that? I agree, man. It's like every time he, it's damn near like per quarter, he like, I'm gonna get better at that. Like, yeah. that, you know what I mean? If he fuck up one thing, he like, nope, gotta focus on that. Nope, gotta focus on that, cause I know I can do that. I'm good tonight on that, but let me focus on that and then turn that shit right around the switch, like they be talking about so hard. So he could switch it on no matter the category, and that was that was evident throughout this documentary. Like it was just incredible, man. Like you watched it live when we were shorties, but it's like to see it the behind the shit, man. It's, it made me more mad too, unfairly against you know. You said what? It made me more mad again, all over again. Who, who was you going for? What? What you mean? I mean, what made you mad? Like it just made me mad that it, it how it ended. Oh, and then, that it had hate Ryan's going for Kraus. And then and then and then I say unfairly because like damn, like you know, dude can't just defend itself. That's the only Ooh, thing. Krause. Yeah, that's the only. Kraus had over twenty years to defend itself. Hey, but we talking about right the the hearing now. And, uh, Hypothetically, yeah. what would Kraus say to defend himself? I didn't do it. Nah, <laughs> but I don't know. I thought that shit was Kraus. Kraus and his ain't. It was for the greater good. I think he would say that. The, the way they paint the picture, it's like he was ego uh, maniacal, where he wanted the front office to get the same credit. It's like, let me see. It's it's almost like, damn, who's who's a backup? Like somebody who's behind the scenes. You can even take it to the extent of a Dame Dash. No disrespect to Dame Dash, but mm -hmm. he was doing some of behind the video, behind the scenes, and now he popping oh, the bottles of the videos and stuff. He's mm -hmm. like, he want to get the same celebration as rappers, which he earned the right to. He is part of the architect, but he wasn't the rapper. You know what I'm saying? But And it's almost the same type of ending. Somebody who was great at what they done, mm -hmm. but the person who was the face or the greater in the situation is the one who's gonna go away a legend. Dame Dash won't die a legend. He'll die a legend to people who respect the game, as will Jerry Krause. Nobody looks at Jerry Krause when he, you think about six bull titles, the last person coming to your mind is Jerry Krause when he was a big, you know what I'm saying, yeah. clog in the machine. Like, it, they hated on they hated on him, but as much as they say, like, on the devil's advocate side, like, yeah. dude was always looking ahead, and that was the reason they got people like Scottie Pippen in. All the people who they acquired from the other teams they even beat, like Ron Harper and Dennis Rodman. Definitely. Like, crazy. But it, overall, it's a good series. The last, Phil Jackson. <laughs> uh, the last, the last episode, man, it was the the, the Jordan, where he out there just hoeing niggas. <laughs> it was a side <laughs> of Jordan. It was a side of Jordan. Listen, this is a side of Jordan we've never seen. <laughs> and we privy to this type of stuff. This is why I like it so much. He out here calling niggas bitches and hoes. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. ho, come on, bitch. Yeah. He out here talking to niggas like nobody <laughs> hit him in his mouth. That's a that's those one of these nowadays. Hey, hey, <laughs> no, this is his teammates. This is so. These are, are his teammates. These are his friends. <laughs> they talk about what he died of Steve Kerr. <laughs> that's what they talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Kerr. He was. It was after George the first retirement. He come mm -hmm. back. It's a whole different Bulls team than when he left. Just about they lost Horace Grant, B.J. Armstrong. Mm -hmm. Then they brought in the Judd Bushes, Bill Winningtons, and you know, Dickie Simpkins, Dickie Simpkins <laughs> Pete Myers, those guys. And see, Kurt Jordan is practice doing what he do, talking that Jordan shit. When you watch it, it's easy to get caught up in thinking, damn, Jordan, he was mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had a method to his madness. And it's like he was trying to toughen them up. Jordan came to the East when it was brutal. 
when when the pistols were out there with pistols and shit, pistol whooping niggas right. in the game. Pretty much. The Rick Mahorns, the Dennis Rodman, Bill Lane like Bears. It was they was winning games like sixty to fifty eight, low scoring you. And then and Jordan had to get tougher in that pressure, so he was trying to make his teammates the same toughness. So with the end justifying the means and stuff, you can totally get where he's coming from. When you look at as the leader, or you view yourself as a leader, you gotta toughen people up at all costs. And then y'all worry about the bumps and bruises after y'all get to the end. That's how Jordan felt. And it's it's crazy they touched him on his gambling. Uh, they talked about the issue where they said that it was potentially the cause of his father getting killed. Uh, when you sit back there and watch it, and it's sad. It's sad because as tough as Jordan was, I think one of the like most humane sides we've seen, him, seen was when he won the, uh, was it the first title back? Yeah. And it was on Father's Day. Yeah. He laid on that floor and he cried like his father just died. You know what I'm saying? And the way he cried is the anguish you get when somebody you love first died. Mm -hmm. And he was real vulnerable out there on the floor in front of everybody. So I think that it's good for people to see that humane side of it. You know what I'm saying? See how much his father meant to him. What I salute most about is because we're in the air where it's always high mom, where everybody only salute the mother. It's the, we're in the woman worship society where they act like the woman, the real MVP mm -hmm. <laughs> every time. Where Jordan was clearly influenced uh, by his father. There's nothing wrong with being influenced by your mother a little bit, but not to the degree that they make it. It's always good to see a man get some shine. And, and, and let me say this too, ahead. like he, uh, like, on, his, on that same page, like his father was like kind of brutal, like not like not like horrible, but he was like, oh, you ain't shit, like you ain't gonna be, you know what I mean? He talked down, and it made him work harder. And this is a society where people are like you can't talk to him like that as a father or a parent. So it's like, I think that was cool to put for them to put that on, that aspect on display and see the results of that. Uh, everybody not gonna fold unless you let them, you know what I mean? And you gotta I build them up. And, and People don't understand the power of tough love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We came from an era where you get the, you get talked about. You get hit in your chest for coming to school in dirty clothes. You know what I'm saying? It was a brutal era, but it, it built character. You know what I'm saying? I think that this era of children are conditioned to be soft. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later when we talk about the murders or whatever. And it's not, it's, it's no individual fault. It's all systemic or whatever, but on a scale of one to 10, um, I'm, Trey was talking about it earlier. He don't watch much TV. I don't watch as much as I used to. I got a few shows that I watch, but I'm a kind of sewer of good TV. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's a good show, I have to see it, whether I catch it late, just like movies or whatever. But on a scale of one to 10, man, I get this shit a strong 10. Mm -hmm. This shit is very entertaining. It give you a nostalgic feeling. You remember, like, certain eras and stuff. And if you meet, you remember the better times. That was a hell of an era for me. Like, my family was close. Mm -hmm. Most of them were still yeah. alive, you know what I'm saying? So you feel it in a different way and stuff. It's like taking a trip down memory lane mm -hmm. where you happy about everything. Like in that moment, you thought that you was having problems or you thought you was going through things. But when you look on it, man, you wasn't going through shit. My life was easy breezy that back shit was then. hella motivating too. Like you get hella motivated from watching that shit. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So I don't know, man, it, and it re-solidified my mind as Jordan being the greatest basketball player ever. I used to like hedge and shit, but it, it's the what have you done for me lately world. You know what I'm saying? So we always talk about the damn. Some people throw up Kareem, he did this, he did that, but ain't nobody fucking watch Kareem in this era. You know what I'm saying? And I, I can understand the argument for somebody older, mm -hmm. but I've heard young people mention Kareem. That's like when you talk about uh, champions, people start talking about Bill Russell. Yeah. If you play basketball on TV, was it black and white? You ain't on my fucking list. <laughs> you not on my fucking list. You the tallest nigga on the floor. In the the only nigga on the floor. Only, <laughs> only nigga. He went to lapel. <laughs> the Boston Celtics was Frankton. But no, no disrespect, Bill. Uh, he did what he did the area that he sure. did. Dominant. Um, I want to get into the the killings that happened. But before we do, I want to play this song. I want to give a shout out to Young Juan. They reached out to us on our uh, Facebook fan page, and he asked, could we put the song on our playlist? We don't have a playlist, but we did a mixtape, so I guess that is what he was talking about. And we do have Volume 2 coming up. Volume 1 produced by, oh, here it is, Jason, by DJ T-Rex. 
Yeah. 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 There we go. Look, there we I go. feel at home now. Yeah. Like, motherfucking the team. Team. Oh, cool. Right. 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 I'm about to pick the song now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got y'all got to check out Volume One. It's on every streaming platform. TTK the podcast. We gonna play the song. Uh, know what to do. We've already listened to it. We want the uh, crowd to listen to it. Crowd. Who the fuck do I think I am? A bull? The 1998 Michael Jordan. <laughs> we let everybody listen to it. And we want uh, some feedback. Let us know what y'all think about it. Yo, 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 that was Young Wine. He shot the song in to us, uh, reached out to us. Uh, thanks for sending that song. And definitely go critique, go to online. What you think of that Renaissance Junior? Man, that's fire, man. I'm messing with it. I'm messing with it. I'm messing with it. What you think? What you think? Hey, that's, uh, I'm not a big R&B, so I ain't got no, I don't hold my, my uh, opinion don't really hold no weight. But uh, it was decent for what it was, and uh, I, I checked out some of his other tracks too. And he got some, he got, a, he got some shit going on. What's up, DJ T Rex? Is that T Rex uh, mixtape worthy? That's T Rex mixtape worthy. I definitely. And then his other song, like he said, I checked out his other joints. His Phoenix joint is definitely, definitely. fire joint, but type of vibe I got from him, man. He brought me back in time, back into the '90s. You know, my mom putting in the CDs like. It's a Tyrese type of vibe for me. Mm-hmm. I got off of it, so I'm like, dang, man. He he got something going, bringing back something, you know. Yeah. Boys can go down memory lane, like you were saying earlier. Go down memory lane and just vibe out a little bit. I was vibing in the yeah. car. I had that boy on repeat. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, though, as a young dude actually doing that type of, you know, that type of vibe, you know, trying to bring that sound back. That's pretty cool. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Well, let me be contrary. I liked it, man. The only thing I didn't like, I didn't like the effects. I didn't like the can, like that auto tune type that. effects. I, I don't like because I like to hear the the singer just sing. I, I like me personally. I can hear him singing, so I can tell he can sing. But yeah, I just don't like sure. the. For sure. And I think you can you can over critique yourself, yeah. and so you feel like you need to add something. But overall, I liked it, man. I um. I would like to hear the raw vocals. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, and and that's because you can always tell who can sing by just their live. But it ain't it ain't no hate, man. Definitely a good song, and it, he said just a, he said actually he sent me this on uh, the, the um, Spotify and also the the drive. But you can find these streaming on all platforms. It's Young Juan uh, J U A N. We're going to have to get him up here after everybody quit being scared because we are the most dangerous podcast in the world. Coronavirus can't stop this shit. <laughs> you know how we do. We in here all day, every day, every Tuesday night at 8. But we definitely going to chop it up with you, man. We got the next take uh, two coming out, and we're going to reach out. Uh, <laughs> we're going to reach out so you can get you to uh, kick it with us. Hopefully we can do a listening party for that one. Yeah. Oh, we gotta yeah. do that. Man. Go volume oh, no. two. We yeah, gotta, volume we two. Gotta. Change it up for us. We have to. We have to, man. That'd be crazy. We got to, it's man. gotta be a two part party then. Shit. Nah. What you say that? Yeah, we was one there too. Yeah, we was in quarantine. And we didn't really uh, get to do it though. Nah, we might as well skate into the table, man. <laughs> We can actually throw the first one on the back end, you know, as a little, like, vibe out. Dude. You know, everybody, like, little drinks and talking, a little last minute going out type thing. Yeah. You know, but. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> In America, we are back here with some of the same old shit. And I, and I call the reaction is the cycle, cycle, the crazy cycle. But what I'm talking about, first I want to touch upon um, the Georgia incident. Again, cause we're gonna we're gonna bring it bring it back, finish it up here, locally in Indianapolis. Uh my Aubrey, he was a how old was he, twenty five or some shit like that? I thought one of them was I don't know. Twenty six. Twenty six. So he's twenty five, I twenty five. Twenty five at the time. Lamar Aubrey, he was a person and it's crazy because I initially thought that this incident took place like this week or recently. Um, actually this and what we're talking about the incident we're talking about is where the the white father and son they they slayed like <laughs> they killed they killed a black man Arbery um, he was he was born 26 years old um, and he just had a birthday and the social media did the goofy, goofy social media shit they do anyway uh, long story short he was in a neighborhood that, and this was in Brunswick, Georgia. He was in a neighborhood that I guess he shouldn't have been in. 
And I think we've all been in neighborhoods we should have been in. For sure. And before I go any further, have you all had any amount of trepidation, fear, or uneasiness in these neighborhoods? Have you? At times. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, I sometimes I'm just mosey doing my own thing. You know, I'm minding my business. So I don't. I ain't got no. Ooh, they gonna come get me type of fear. You yeah. know, I'm just minding my business. So I don't even, you know, expect it. I'm like, you know, got my eye like. It's just more being aware. <laughs> it's just more being aware of how you perceive in that area versus uh, just scared. And I ask y'all that just to, just from my own standpoint. Uh, anybody know me know that I drive trucks. I make deliveries, uh, residential to businesses. Sometimes I have to go into towns I've never heard of. I can imagine that 30, 40 years ago there were sundown towns. If you don't know what that sundown. is, it's a town that you can't be in when the sun go down. If you're one of the coldest. Um, I tell people all the time, I say it in a joking way, but when I'm, after I make my delivery, I walk off, I zigzag. Cause I don't want Bubba to be sitting in that tree house perched up with his rifle and shit to nail me. Yeah. I have those, and, and I'm making, I'm making it, uh, the humorous, but the truth is like, I have these apprehensions in neighborhoods and stuff. I think it's natural. Some people think that we have unfounded fears in America. Um, they see how. It's like hearing sirens. Definitely. Definitely. They they see how some black people progress. Uh, we see that the music and the culture that dominates America is what is uh, considered black culture, whether it's hip hop, the way we dress, talk, slang, and we see the slang everywhere. <clears throat> um, newscasters in mainstream news, uh, sports channels, this started off with Stuart Scott and ESPN. We dominate pop culture. And it gives a unfounded uh, security blanket to some people. Think you can just do anything you want to, and ideally you can in an idealistic world. But when you're in a natural world where shit is really happening, you have to be aware of your surroundings at all times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> where shit is really happening. Yeah. Um, Not the matrix. Shout out to my buddy uh, Wood. He he does a podcast called Pay Me No More. Uh, I forget to Pay Me No More. I might got him mixed up. He got a few. He one of those dudes who just got a lot going on. He be handling his business. Uh, I don't want to disrespect it, so I definitely it's it's always personal. That's the one you're speaking on. And he was talking about the first time he seen uh, or he can recall one of these incidents. And we just talking about the Bulls here, and I hate it because like I'm piggybacking off his. I might be sampling a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> sampling. But he was talking about the James Bird incident. Do you remember that down there? It was either Alabama, Mississippi, or maybe Texas. But they tied him to the back of the truck and they dragged him until he died. Do you remember that? This happened down south in 1997. I was too young to articulate what was going on. But you fast forward. I mean, you're 23 years later. That's 23. 23 years later, we are still going through these things. What what was the biggest change at that time is that we didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. So things didn't go on fire then. It wasn't that group thing or that group emotion to push shit to an edge. Uh, Juvie said that these type of things happen all the time. He said every day. And I'm definitely inclined to agree with that sentiment. It's just sometimes these things go public and then once they go public, <laughs> that was an accident. We were not <laughs> celebrating. Right. Niggas getting killed, <laughs> but once the, once once social media gets hold of it, it blows up. That was an alarm. That's what that was. It's alarmingly, it's alarming how it blows up. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's happening at an alarming rate. But but this took place February twenty third, and a video was leaked. They said by the defense attorney in the town. Well, I'm sorry, it was somebody in town uh, released it, and it caused the typical social media wildfire. Yeah. Um. This, this, the perpetrators in this murder was Gregory McMichael, 64, and Travis McMichael, father and son. They told the police they pursued Aubrey with another person recording. Um, Citizens of <clears> rest, <throat> I guess. After they spotted him running, uh, mob justice. Right. After they spotted him running in the neighborhood. They said the father and son said they thought that he matched the appearance. This is, this is the most typical shit. You fit the description. Like we heard it so much that it became a joke. You know what I'm saying? You fit the description. But this is some shit that actually happens. They said that he looked 
uh, he matched the appearance of the burglary suspect. So you typically mean that it was a light skinned or a dark skinned man that between five foot and eight feet tall. He was fat and skinny. <clears throat> That's the description that they had. Um, and they said that they had recorded him on a surveillance camera to, uh, the same time before. Anybody who's ever stolen, which I have, I've never hit the same spot twice. I figured they'd wait on me the next time. Yeah. Especially in some strange neighborhood. Let's be logical. That's a smart criminal. What, to not come back? Yeah. And <laughs> you gotta think about a jog, too, because I used to jog. I run cross country and all that. You on a routine. You yeah. not, you gonna run that same route. Yeah. So, like, yeah. of course you're gonna be seen in the same area. Like, right. That's my route that I run in the morning. Definitely. And that's why he couldn't have been a criminal. Not at this, this specific time. <laughs> <laughs> this specific time. But, um, they, first off, let's just back it up. It's, it's crazy how the audacity that these people have. It's crazy, but it's not, because it's it happens so often. When something is consistent, it has to be sane in some kind of perspective. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's normal, I should say, to these people to react like this. And this ain't something that you just start doing. It's something that you condition to do. It's a culture thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is a father and son. So it's something that they've grown up with. I hate to say this shit, but protect your territory. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the idea, ideology they had, right or wrong. That's how he's been conditioned. It's a culture thing. Um, we know that during the Civil War, Georgia was a Confederate state. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's that, like, the Northern or the Union was something that was pro-black. But we know they have unabashedly supported what they supported, mm -hmm. whether it's their culture. You talk to a person about the Confederate flag, they tell you it's not about slavery, it's about culture dismissing the fact that slavery was part of that culture. Um, Aubrey's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones, said that her son, a former uh, football player, was just jogging through the neighborhood before he was killed. Somebody called the um, dispatch or whatever. And you got to understand, Brunswick's not a big city. Everybody potentially know everybody. It's a lot of nepotism. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. We grow on each other. I don't know your father. The father in this case was actually a former police officer. So you have you have known he had these connections. They said that uh, someone called and reported there's a black man running down the street. I just need to know what he's doing wrong. The dispatcher responds. Some logical shit. Even in the midst of some bullshit, it's always somebody who's seen to say some logic. If you tell me, if you call me, hey man, somebody running down the street. Okay. I'm like, what the fuck, man? What? Is he barefoot? Who can? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the second call, six minutes later, someone can be heard yelling, stop, damn it, stop. Then after a pause, Travis. Again, Travis is the son. <laughs> hey, this is insane. <laughs> but um, if you've seen the video, which I haven't, I've seen snippets, I've seen them tussling. Like, they were so audacious that they physically engaged this black man. Yeah. Physically, did you watch the video? Yeah. Take over for me. What did you see in the video? They jumped out that motherfucker like mobbed him. Like, I'm jogging. My foot pull up in the truck. You know, you like, whoa, what's going on? They hop out with the shotties. You know, start grabbing him. And just, you know. When you was watching it, what exactly did you think? Like, you run, you box. And as Trey said, he in cross country. He was in cross country in high school. I can't imagine. If you can, just put yourself in his shoes. And and like we always say, what we would do if a certain situation occurred. As best you can, put yourself in his shoes. And what would go through your mind, just if you was assuming or just guessing? They about to kill me. Honestly, I'd be like, what? What's going on? Like, cause I'd be. Trying to figure out first, like, why y'all running up on me? Because I ain't did nothing. I know I ain't did nothing. So I'm like, what's going on? So I'm trying to figure out at first. And if they ain't giving me no answers, then I don't know. I don't know what to think they ain't like. Yeah, that's, that's they got a shotgun. And that's it. That's all I'm looking at. What you got this gun for? Yeah, that's crazy, man. Like, I just can't imagine. Like, you really jogging and a motherfucker hop out of this truck. 
Like, they really like, damn. The article goes on saying the leaked video shows a black man running at a jogging place. I'm gonna stop as I read this art article. If you still in your spring, you know what I'm saying? You out of here. The truck is stopped in the road ahead of him with one white man, one of the white men standing in the pickup bed, and the other beside the uh open driver's side door. The running man attempts to pass the pickup on the passenger side, moving just beyond the truck briefly outside the camera's view. A gunshot sounds in the video shows the runner, runner grappling with the man over what appears to be a shotgun or a rifle. A second man can be heard and the runner can be seen punching the man. A third shot is fired at point blank range. The runner staggers a few feet and falls face down. Another observation my buddy Wood made. When he woke up that morning, he didn't know these white men. That put a lot of shit in perspective. He woke up that morning with plans. A birthday coming up later on this year. Uh, maybe a girl he was going to call. Maybe call talk to his mother. Maybe he was going to go out to dinner with somebody that night. At no point in time do you think he's going to run into these two perpetrators. I got to use police talk. <laughs> these two perpetrators. These murders. Mm -hmm. And they're going to just end his life. This is the danger that we live in in this country. In this captivity. Uh, it's sad that we have to have these constant reminders that this can happen to any of us. We wake up every day and we expect to come home. There's no other group of people that have to be cognizant of the fact that they might not go home. It's a war zone. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If you go to Iraq, you you have a feeling I might not come back on that plane to America a long way. I might come back in a box. It's sad, but this is the thought we have to have in our minds when we ingratiate ourselves with uh, particular white communities. These two dudes are not indicative of every white person that you come across, of course. But you have to exercise caution. When he, I'm sure he's ran through the neighborhood before. But these two dudes felt like killers this day. They felt like police. They felt like vigilantes. And they were, were alpha mob justice. <clears throat> when we see this, like what? What can you do? What can you? We tell people all the time. You get pulled over by police. Just do it. I tell my son. Just listen to him. Yeah. Whether you agree with him or not, just, just listen because you hopefully. And we know this don't even work. Do what they say. We see them just shoot people for no reason, literally. So we don't really know what to do in these situations. Um, this wasn't even gonna get prosecuted until this got leaked. They was trying to say that they found like they didn't get arrested. When this shit happened, they talked, they shit, got interviewed, went home, same fucking day. It's just the power of social media and the will of the most high that it leaked. And now they charge with uh, felony counts of murder and they in jail and their addresses have been leaked. Like people know where they live. Yeah, we would have never seen this shit. That's why I was, that was yeah. my first question. I was like, why didn't, why everybody so outraged now and this shit happened in February, but they just go to show you how they suppress that shit. And uh, the number one and number two, the power of social media uh, getting a hold of some shit because, like, was it reported? I'm sure it was reported. But, I'll guarantee you, what reported like but, this. But exactly, it's yeah. not. The, it's not going to be exposed the way that, the same way the social uh, media would allow it to be. That's what I'm saying. So, if it was reported, it definitely flew under the radar. But social media blew that shit up to the point where it demanded some shit happen. So. At least something positive came from some social media for one. But what do you think was positive? But I mean, just the fact that they was brought in. That's that's a start. We can't we can't say that it's a solution, but right, right. it's better than nothing. How would y'all deal with this? Um let, let's again let's play fantasy. We not us. The address was released again. Again. If you're Israeli, this is what you care about. You were supposed to be eating later on after had dinner. Y'all supposed to go to a party. Y'all supposed to go check out, ride up to Georgia, uh, catch a, a hogs game, something like that. What what is your what is your response to this? Uh, you had a people address. Do you turn up? Where I'm from? Yeah, right down. That's it. Hey, bro. Yeah. That's it. The boys in the hood type style, and you just ride out there. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Why do you think that this isn't the reaction of more people? Like we we always hear about the conversation how once um, 
When a black person kill a black person, everybody ready to ride on that nigga who killed him. They, but when they, a white person does, they it's... Want, they, want, they want money. You think money pop in their head? I mean, somebody could possibly be like, if y'all do X, Y, Z, then maybe y'all should just get the civic check. And, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, I don't know. I think, it, I think you know, just a thought that that may play a part in why they don't want to retaliate. And they may want to retaliate the right way. What's the right way though? How do you what, what exactly? Because because this system isn't set up for us in any way to be right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think you hit on it when you said that there was a small town that it was since it's a small town mentality. They probably already know like the lengths that they will go to cover that shit up. Like it's been done, overdone. That the whole town will go through great lengths to cover some shit up for a former police officer, especially that they still consider probably still the sheriff. <laughs> with, with that piece of knowledge in your mind though, like why? What would it? What would you do if this was your child? Y'all for being out. You mean like, uh, like what could I say? Or you mean as a result? Or what would the advice I would? No, to? this they you get that call. Oh shit, that's family though. Oh yeah, that's family. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's automatic. <laughs> that's not a question. That's family. What well, well, I'm asking you know, is because you see a lot of people on, online and, and their their solution on his on his birthday, the 26th. They said, let's run 2.6 miles for all people. It was a hashtag. And honor him turn, uh, supposed to turn 26. That was his, their, 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 you know what I'm saying? Their thing of like, this is how we're going to overcome. This is showing them. Mm -hmm. We're going to go out here and run 2.6 miles. These are the same people that march and think that it's the solution. No. What's, what's wrong? Like, what? When the fuck? This is the only thing that I can say. And I hope it don't come off wrong. I, I, I commend these two. White men and supporting and doing what the fuck they believe. Not condoning it by any stretch of the imagination, but they stood to their principles, rightly or wrong. Mm -hmm. They know who we are in this country. We're the only people who don't understand this. Uh, it's a lot of people who post the same shit every day. Black people are not your enemy. Uh, my skin don't make me a, a tart. Yes, it do. If you get single out Clearly. because of your skin color, or you get shot at a higher rate than any other nation per capita, it's clearly a separation between friend and foe. What you have to do, you have to understand originally how we came over here, which is captivity. And it's, it's, it's what's going on is prophecy. People don't want to listen and believe that part of the aspect thing, but we live in our prophecy. Where we were going to be destroyed by our enemies and stuff to the most high redeemers. It is going to all flip around. But in the meanwhile, in the meantime, the first thing you got to do is to be cognizant of your surroundings. To be aware of where you are and how people perceive you in that area. area. Yeah, street smart. Yeah, you can't, be out here with, <laughs> you can't be out here with that fantasy and shit that we equal. That they going to treat me nice just because I'm nice. It don't make sense. It's senseless and it's ignorant for us to run around with the ideology. I always say I'm a strong advocate of separation. I don't believe in forced integration. Why you go to Liberia then? Because it's controlled by the same people who control this shit. Yeah. But the thing <laughs> is, if somebody want to come over and fuck with us, that's cool. But y'all fuck with us on our terms. You know what I'm saying? It's not, we not going to force y'all to like us. I'm not going to move into a neighborhood and be begging these people to accept me in their neighborhood. I go where I'm wanted. But you, this is this is the country made of people that do that. Though we go to every other country and be like, speak English, nigga. Really? <laughs> That's how the it's, it's the arrogance. Yeah. It's the arrogance. <laughs> um, but the thing is, you don't force yourself on nobody. He had a, a right to be in his neighborhood, mm -hmm. which is okay. But still, that a right don't make you bulletproof. Mm -hmm. And I'm by no means am I turning him to the perpetrator. He's a fucking no. totally innocent. He had a. He could be where he wanted to be, but I'm just saying for future references of us, watch your surroundings, be cognizant of who you're around, and like I, that's like that's all I can say. This is a sad ass case because, like I said, this could happen to anybody. Nothing, he could have not been no. jogging. He could have been working over there. Yeah, it's nothing. Literally nothing. It's not do. like it's, it's it's no safety. The most thing you can do is use your brain that, that you've been given and stuff, and realize that everybody don't like you because you like everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I don't know, man. It's, it's some sad shit.
Um, Only solution I got is maybe we maybe we start practice. We got to study double consciousness, like W E D W E D Du Bois was talking about. Can you double, explain that detail? Double, double consciousness is being aware of how you perceive. Uh, so you use that as an advantage uh, to dictate your behavior in that environment. When you say di- dictate your behavior, what exactly do you mean? Meaning you move accordingly, knowing because you got the upper hand, knowing that these fools is looking at me crazy. So I need to pretend. Yeah, I need to pretend. Not even whatever it is, whatever you might call it. I need to be at least camouflaged enough. And sad to say, do you have to camouflage to around your own people? You shouldn't have to. No, I'm saying when you're around your own people, do you camouflage? Uh, you talking about me or just people? I don't think people should have to, but they I'm do. I'm talking about though. around your own people. They do because if you in the hood, nigga, and you stunt, you should probably tone it down a I'm little bit. I'm talking about an insensible environment. I'm talking about it. I'm not talking about some. No, you know, no, no, you shouldn't. And that that just goes to my point. If if you want, if I can be around you and be myself, we cool. Mm-hmm. But if I have to put on and shit, then we we both we shouldn't be around each other. Exactly. If we can't get along, let's don't force it. Mm-hmm. Cause that that's what that's what gets people fucked up. And what 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 bothers me too is how niggas turn into fucking super keyboard warriors. Mm-hmm. When they start talking about we gotta start getting guns, we got what the fuck you gonna do? We start get shot. If you get in, we don't have it's an army. Time, you know what I'm saying? It's not like we have an army and stuff where yeah, yeah. we be like, yep, they had again. Get no. the fucking 38s and the nines no. and no fucking Uzis. It's gonna be the same result. It's just gonna they gonna spin that shit. And be like he he had a gun. He was coming right for me. <laughs> Shout out to um, Amar Aubrey. A terrible situation. Um, it, it's hard to fucking articulate your, your feelings in these type of situations. By no means am I emotionally attached to it though. And I'll say it because it is. I don't. I don't watch video. Mm-hmm. I don't like seeing shit like that. God knows it's gonna drive my emotions. It's gonna wake up my triggers. Mm-hmm. So again, peace to this family, man. Say travel. Hope the Most High uh, <laughs> is expedient with his judgment that's coming. Maybe that's why I was released, man. Definitely. <laughs> Another note, man. Just northwestern here on 62nd of Michigan Road. We seen the shooting of Sean Reed, a local, uh, a local dude. Um, anybody have his age? He was a young dude, too. 21, right? 21. Did you see, though, 21. speaking of uh, the retaliation that you were talking about, did you see what happened after that here in the city, too? What? The dude that called in the police, and he, he was waiting for him. I got it right here. It's the McKenna yeah, Rose. That. He 19. It was the same. It was, like, 1.30 that next morning. What did he do? He called the police and was, like, somebody robbing or something at this in the apartments. They pulled up to the apartment. He was waiting outside with the gun, started shooting up at him. They killed him. What? Nineteen. That's what? Yeah. Yeah. That's what? right here. What was this that's why I was it's like three people. Three people got killed in twenty four hours. No, that's why it was hard to separate. Lady got hit, by hit yeah, by the police. So it was like that's all of them. But they said the lady. See, that's foolish. But they said the lady. Yeah, that's yeah, foolish. Yeah. But I was saying that's on the same yeah. terms as like how how you yeah. said re- like retaliation, how yeah. you would react. That's how some people react off of like the videos and stuff. Like is it? Yeah, like you said, people say go get the guns and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what he yeah. thought. Go get the yeah. guns, and he was right. Well, when nobody was behind, there was nothing that came out with it. Like, yeah. oh, I thought the lady, you know, do a dude, the nineteen year old one that had a gun. On yeah, him. he had the gun on, waiting That's on the feds to come up, pull up. Shit. He told him that yeah. somebody was burnt, like robbing the uh, apartments. They pulled up. He had the gun ready. He That's what I was talking kill about. Him. He was ready to kill him. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm like, he that was, would be yeah, a separate yeah. incident. I thought though. somebody was actually robbing this place. And he was nah, like, he was waiting on them. Nah. No, I don't know if it was because of what happened, because this happened right. after that. It just happened at one thirty in the morning or something like that. But he was he was waiting on them boys. Mm-hmm. With, with Deshaun Reed, man, listen, I'm a type of person that this shit seems so fantastic and far fetched or just out of this world that when I first watched this shit, I thought it was a gimmick. If this would have been any of that, was I'd say this shit was fake. The shit seems so extra. Uh, this is a young man who was killed on um, almost basically Facebook Live. He was, and this is this was wrong with this generation, man. I don't want to sound like that old nigga, but everything is a fucking game. Everything is entertainment. Everybody's trying to be famous for the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm like, was he paid to do that? How that shit look? And people don't want to hear this shit because they don't want to be honest with themselves. First off, let me start off and say it's unfortunate that somebody had to die. Mm-hmm. Or... Unfortunately, somebody did die. I want to say had to die. Everybody in this area, they know exactly what happened with this. Uh, he was, he was starting to fuck up. He was starting to fuck up. He was on, 
I, I look, he was on social media and shit on that goddamn live for an hour. Over an hour. I don't know how long it was spent running from the police, but he is obviously in some sort of, I guess, high-speed chase. I don't know the, the particulars, exactly where it started, what he was running for. Some people say that he, well, he said he wasn't going back to jail. They said, some people say he was on house arrest. I don't know the details. All I do know that leading up to the slang in, in like two minutes, I knew that he was mentally ill. I knew he suffered mental illness. Um, he was just too wired. You can see it in his eyes. I don't know if he's on. I don't, I don't know if he's on the influence of drugs. It's hard for me in the situation to look at him as a victim. The same way I look at Aubrey, or am I Aubrey? These are the only thing they have in common is that they're black men in America. One was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And one went to the wrong place, seemingly on some bullshit. Mm -hmm. He 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 said he uh, people say he said I'm sorry, mama. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta forgive me, whatever. Somebody come and get my dumb ass. Blah blah blah. This this shit is sick. This shit is gross. The 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 Amar Aubrey situation like that could have been anybody. This situation this could have been none of us. This would have been nobody I fucking know. I mean, I'm gonna tell you some real shit. I get nervous around particular people. When I say nervous, if I don't know how, if you are predictable, I have to be aware. I've been around people like this. I mean, you ain't got shit to lose. I'm going to tell you. Your mind. I've been around people like this, and I'll say, I hope the police get them. Get <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this nigga need to be arrested. Mm. Or, if this nigga don't buy me, I'm hitting him dead in this shit. Because he might hit me in my shit. He might fucking bite my ear. He might just fucking... Pick a brick and bust me in my I shit. How crazy this it's, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and it's no disrespect. I'm just being honest. And this is this is well, we gotta start being accountable. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. accountable, man. He yeah. got out that car, yeah, and took off running. Okay, yeah. Yep. And I'm gonna tell you the fuck, most fucked up part about the running part. He looked down at his phone when he was running. He was still concerned about that fucking them lights and them hearts and whatever. And that is fucking crazy to me. That's a lot. And it's fucked up to have somebody crazy. But what's worse than having somebody who's crazy or off or ill is people enabling. Like, we got to recognize these signs and these symptoms in each other and correct it. I went back and looked at this Facebook shit. And this wasn't an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. This nigga been crazy and shit his whole fucking Facebook career. <laughs> he got a video Facebook of himself career. driving past shooting some shit. Did you see that? He doing a fucking drive by. And I wouldn't say this if somebody didn't post it on fucking YouTube as a way to justify him getting shot. Mm -hmm. But they was just showing him. Listen, when you he said, said that, in the video too, like, I'm going to shoot. He said, I ain't going down, I'm going to shoot. Did he say that? Yeah, he said it in the video, like, like when he was driving. So then he got a bunch of. And I'm not. I don't, don't want to make all of these shots. I ain't saying these Exactly. Shot, but but we just, we just use our common sense. And. He was already on some wild shit. Wow. You know I mean? So it's just like people like that don't live long. Yeah. And I'm and people I'm, like that don't live long. And it's upsetting. I'm probably on the same page as what you're saying. It's upsetting when you start seeing people like we gotta protest this. Yo, and that hey, shit. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. Like, that shit. Yeah. What you saying? What you saying? Uh, my little, friend, little people things? like they live like that don't live long. Yeah. My homie, my man, look, rest in peace, my best friend Tony. Yeah. He died, man. Literally, like he spent the night in my house. The next day. He did not. He spent my house the day before. Then the next day he went home. He did not wake up, and he was perfectly. They was like he was fine. Like he was in the room, but he was so fucking wild. Like we wake up, and he wanted to go fight. Like he fight. We fight. That's what he do. He fight. He gonna knock somebody out today, and he gonna bully somebody today, and he gonna gonna fight somebody today. And it was just malicious. Like he was, I was just like, why is he like this? And, and and it's crazy you say that. This, now you have his parents. Uh, it's not right. We're going to fight for him. I swear to God. It's just not right. Said Reed, Father Jamie Reed. We need to fight for this. We don't need to let this fade. We need to all fight. No, we all don't need to fight. You should have fucking fought his ass with his little badass boy. More, more so than him. Health. More so than him. It's his fucking parents' fault. Yeah. And the reason why I say that because... To be this fucking wild, man, that shit starts at home. It's yeah, a culture. Got out the military, uh, for, for some shit. It's a culture thing. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no shit where you just go outside, man. This is 
from birth up. It's a lot of enabling. Uh, and I, ain't, I don't want to disrespect his parents, but if we're going to keep it real like we do on here, i got to be honest. We have to go to the root of the problem. I can't just call him a problem without going back to, like, how was he raised? What type of environment was you in? What what responsibilities responsibilities you get? He was in the military. Usually dudes like this benefit from the military. They give them some kind of structure. They give them the structure they didn't have when they grew up and stuff. And it make them a man. I'm not an advocate of the military. But, man, sometimes you got to do what you got to do and shit to straighten up. We see people who do this shit and straighten up. I was on fucking YouTube when they said cops killed a vet. That's how they try to spin the shit. Mm-hmm. Cops killed a vet. This nigga's not Rambo. Oh, that's what they was talking about? <laughs> yeah. I saw that and I was thinking yeah. it was a different story. Nigga, it was. <laughs> it was an alternate history. Revisionist history. But, Mental health in our community. Uh, I think some people use it as a scapegoat when they want to cry on Facebook. We see how people just try to, you know what I'm saying, gallivant the I'm bipolar. They use it for their lack of accountability. We know when somebody bullshit and want attention, and we know when somebody fucking crazy. That was and crazy. fucking two posts in the 30 seconds of a video, I knew this nigga was a fucking nut. Exactly. I was about to say. We know people like this. How do we, how do we, what do we do to the youth who are out here they growing up with no structure? It's like they just running out here fucking insane. And it's not their fault. It's the, it's the freedom they're given. It's the desire to be famous. It's getting on Facebook, uh, TikTok, everything. Everybody want to be fucking somebody. And it, and, and it's it's usually to cover up some kind of insecurity. When people act like this, man, and I don't want to disrespect his parents and shit because I don't know him, but I honestly don't think they loved him properly. He act like somebody who's never been loved. He like a fucking pit bull that was taught to fucking fight and was kicked when he lost. That's the kind of fucking energy he had. Am I wrong in my assumption on how I view things? Yeah, because he was he was into some wild shit like beyond just before this. Like, you know, of all the shit that just been surfacing since the shit had happened, it was like he just was doing some wild shit all the time. Like he just that's what he was. He was doing some wild shit. So it's like you can't even really like you said, like, I can't go Smack the shit out of cop, man. He don't do nothing that time with my dad. Like, good job. And then I go smack right. another cop, and he killed me. Like, man, y'all motherfucker. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, hey, next, hey, you, sh- like, hey, that's cool. You smacked him. I kind of like that shit, but don't do that shit again. You know what I mean? Like, don't, you know, just, that's so. But they wasn't like Boundary. trying to correct. There was no correction of the behavior to prevent certain things that may have occurred that would that did happen. So. And especially when the, this obvious is that obvious as what Torres said in the yeah. first couple posts, you like okay, it's clear that this person has a, a a mental situation going on. Why didn't nobody help this person that's around him? And this and this is so much so different from a lot of the police brutality yeah. issues because it was a lot of provocation yeah. from what we can see. And then again, the, I'm gonna go out shooting. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure the police didn't hear him say that. But he said it. It lets you know where his mind is at and the flipping behavior, the laugh and the joke and the plan to keep looking at your phone. That's why I thought it was fake. You know what I'm saying? And no fear. Like, I don't think he had natural fear. So it's like he was detached from reality in the context of he didn't have the fear to keep you alive. You know what I'm saying? Because when I say fear, when I go into a neighborhood, it's not like I'm scared of these people as individuals. If we go heads up, we're going to beat the brakes off of them. But when it's a fucking community where they'll cover this shit up, where I won't get back to see my children, you know what I'm saying? Those things are what cause fear in me. He, he on baby. He said if he's a home baby, he did it. So I, I'm, I'm, I think he had a child, a daughter or something. And I look at his pictures, he looks so happy with the little girl. And, and it, it, it's sad that he won't get to grow with her just a couple more years because it would have matured him more. It'll calm you down more. You got children. You you do things because of your children. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit that you do or don't do is based on them as opposed to yourself. And sometimes you got to grow into that. And unfortunately, he, he didn't get to do that. One thing I won't do is completely absolve the police for what happened. He got out, he ran. They, somebody, they said an eyewitness said that his pants were sagging. That's how he got caught. In any event, from the video, I can hear the taser. Mm-hmm. 
But it's like, just bah, 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 bah. Yeah. it's like there's no hesitation. So yeah. if he had a gun drawn on him, just from my ears and what my ears tell my brain, it's hard for me to believe that he had time to pull out a gun. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what kind of bitch ass taser he had that couldn't put him down. But the, the gunshot scene, sudden. It seemed like he was holding two guns. That's what it sounds like. It means it's like he holding taser and he holding the real yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. For sure, for sure. And one thing that's kind of... Uh, What's the only comment? one officer who did the shoot? That's what it said. One officer was at the scene. But if you listen to it, you hear him yell shit before the taser even go off and the gun. So I'm like, why is he yelling shit? Who the police shit? I mean, it yeah, sounded like it, yeah. it, it sounded like it was from a it distance. Like I don't shit. know who, but it was like yeah. shit. And then you hear the, the taser and then you hear the gun. And, and we like, are speculating. Um, but one thing I do, I'm not going to speculate on is that I know that if I'm in a fucking police chase, yeah. if I make the police chase me, they're going to fuck you up at yeah. the end of the chase. Because like, you made them chase you. It's just law by now. Like you made me chase you, motherfucker. They don't want to. They don't want to do no work, and you made them do all that work. You definitely get. And fucked this was up in broad daylight. Day. Yeah, you about to get fucked up. And I'm sure uh, 62nd and Michigan Road is a very busy area. Very. People seeing this. I wonder what did they see? Uh, they said that they found a gun. Is that what they saying? That's what they, they saying. found a gun. Okay. I didn't hear the shit. To hear it shit. Like in the, I mean, you can't really see like people trying to judge it off the video. It, it looked like it's on his hip because he got. He, he said he a had a gun. Yeah, well, people said he had a gun. So I'm like, and then like the picture they show him that he had, like he had like a extended, you know, clip on it too. So if he was, he was a skinny dude, you would have been able to see it. On his I'm hip. speculating. He took off running, pants fall. He grabs the gun. Police see the gun. Pat, 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 pat. And when do you stop shooting? Do you squeeze off to the clips empty as Biggie recommended? It don't matter what the fuck he had on him if he pulling up his pants. What you mean? It's, assume, had... it's assumed that he pulling up a gun, pulling out a gun. And so with that said, <laughs> with that said, it's hard to see him as a victim. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that he should have got shot and killed, but this was very preventable. I'm like, it gotta be some footage somewhere. It, I mean, we in the yeah. age of. Yeah, it's okay. That's why I ain't really speaking on it because I'm waiting until everything come yeah, out, come to life. Yeah, everything there's something, doing something. There's got to be, like you said, it's busy. There's got to be some yeah, witnesses. There's, there's got to be some cameras. There's, there's got to be something. Man. What's crazy, there too, is. Too people, there was a woman screaming, too. You can hear in the background, yeah. like, some woman going off. Like, yeah. got to be somebody that was there. I thought they said the pregnant woman was the one who got hit at the end of the chase. I thought the woman. No, that was that was the morning. I think that was in the morning. Okay, so I changed the start rumors. Okay, uh, <laughs> I was trying to get clear. No, I'm gonna fuck with you. But uh, uh, damn, I lost my kind of train of thought. With with um the outcry, people jumped on social media so fast that they want Sean Reed to be a hashtag so bad. Somebody told me, I said, oh, you need to go downtown and fucking, I wish the fuck I, I gotta go to work. I wish the fuck I would be out there marching. Niggas is the most marchingest, unproductive. What the fuck has a march ever done? Definitely ain't seen no white people march in my lifetime, except for parades. Uh, well, you know, they're out here trying to get to get off quarantine. Yeah, they they marching for that? They yes. Rallies. They they are are rallies. I figured it was going to happen. Yeah. Gonna the going to be the purge next. Yeah, it's going to be the purge next. Those motherfuckers are turning up, though. Because <laughs> they ain't got that same... Listen, now, niggas is embarrassed. Now, they'll flip this motherfucker upside down. We got to be out by July 4th, <laughs> damn it. For all the motherfuckers, like, hey... Who wanna fuck this motherfucker? They, they gonna fuck this motherfucker up. What y'all think about the people down? Yeah, we draw down 60 seconds down Michigan Road and they talk about harm for justice. <laughs> this how stupid. I'm not missing words. Niggas are dumb as fuck. Niggas are fucking idiots. Honk for justice. You honk and then you think <laughs> justice gonna fall in the fucking sky? It's like what? Niggas are fucking prone to rally cries and empty chants. Yes, we can. Change gonna come. Even empty donation, like you just blindly donating to some shit you don't know where the money gonna go. What in Black Lives Matter, man? What the fuck? Like it's it's an insult to your own self to be standing on the fucking corner talking about we want justice, and then y'all out here screaming, "Fuck the police!" Fuck the police for what? <laughs> fuck twelve. Fuck. 
What the fuck y'all? Y'all better refocus your anger. Be angry at yourselves. Be angry at us for not having no culture. Be angry at us for not holding ourselves accountable. Be angry for not telling each other the truth. Be angry for being on that fucking live video talking about some cut of my house. Uh, I cook. Uh, you, you silly nigga. Be angry at the fucking lack of structure in our community. You can't be mad at them for doing what the fuck they do. When you see that they are consistent in their behavior or the way that they handle their business when it comes to us, gotta move different. adjust to the bad throw. Double I always say you have to adjust to the bad throw. That's what the greats do. Jerry Rice played with Joe Montana and Steve Young. He got the most touchdowns ever. All the touchdowns he caught were not perfect throws. He had to double back. He had to, you know what I'm saying, lose his foot and get up and catch. You have to adjust if you want to fucking survive them throws. Adjust to the bad throw. That's what we have More to do. More than bad boys. Exactly. <laughs> we, we, are, we are a culture that don't hold ourselves accountable. We always look into blame somebody. You know what I'm saying? We can't blame the police for this shit right here. And no, no, people don't want to hear this. It ain't no he should have got on the porch. It ain't no he should have put the basketball up. This nigga shouldn't have been fucking running from the police. Yeah. Once we get past this victim mentality, because we are in a victim culture. And what I mean by that is, every time something happens, we want to fucking fall down at Peter Griffin. <laughs> 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 Niggas don't want to get up and walk it off. Everybody wants somebody to fucking feel sorry for us. And guess what? Them honking horns ain't going to make them feel sorry for us. They drive, you know what they say? They drive past and they take pictures. And then they go home and say, look, honey, I got some George like this idiot. You know what I'm saying? They go home, they not losing sleep because you motherfuckers over here marching because they know it was not substantial. You know what I'm saying? It won't be sustained. It won't translate into nothing. It's going to be the same shit. They going to put out a new TikTok dance. Beyonce going to say something like, fuck these niggas, get money. And these marching bitches gonna forget what the fuck they was mad at. Cause they all go back to fucking ego. They out there cause they wanna be seen. You know what I'm saying? The people who make changes don't make noise. The people who do shit to change shit don't get up and talk about it. They don't sit up here and make hashtag a hashtag. If I get fucked up by the police or anybody, don't turn me into a hashtag. Don't do justice for the tours. Don't do that shit cause it's a disrespect to me and my fucking legacy. As a fucking man who stand for something. Let superficial people be superficial. It's not going to gonna be a split in the culture. We can't have the mentality where we want to save everybody. And I've been a victim of this. One well, thing, I got to figure out a plan to make it better for us. You can only help your tribe. The people around you. The people who want to be helped. The progressive thinkers. I had to learn the hard way, man, that you got to let idiots be idiots. And you hope that they wake up in time and shit when it's time to make a change. A real change. A substantial change. Power recognize power. I always say that. Don't nobody get bigger shit. Any revolution, which these motherfuckers allude that they're trying to uh, attain or whatever, is uh, change always come with violence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We not in a position to cause violence here. It's a pipe dream. So you, gotta, you can do one or two things. You can sit the fuck back and make a plan of silence. And the best plan is self-containment, to be self-contained. He was interacting with them. Had he been, listen, like he said, had he been obeying the law, had he been on his shit, he would be here today. It's not like the Amal Aubrey situation where he was, it was happy since, you know what I'm saying? Where he was out here jogging. This nigga was a criminal. This nigga was out here living on the edge. You know what I'm saying? How can you have, like, outside his parents, how can you have uh, sorrow for him? And I'm not a cold-hearted motherfucker. But I don't have a connection to him. I don't have a connection to this situation. I'm not yoked up with this type of behavior. You know what I'm saying? I don't sympathize with him outside the fact that I wish he'd have got some help for his mental issues. For sure. That I wish he had a more concrete structure around him. People who actually love him. When you love people, you don't justify everything they do. You know what I'm saying? Love, it, it, it can be confused with hate sometimes because you got to be strong with it. You know what I'm saying? You got to snatch a motherfucker up and be like, look, nigga. Hey, guidance. Hell yeah. Guidance. And that's what we love. We don't have that strong male figure 
or this straw milk, his father should be a fucking shame of himself. I definitely thought of Delonte was. I would have rather for this nigga that said, I don't know my dad. Because to know your fucking dad, to have his last name, and you out here like this, what kind of parent are you? What kind of father are you? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not mean to be disrespectful, but if it's taken that way, then it is what it is. What kind of man are you to let your son grow up out here and run amok like that? We had everybody done rebelled against their parents at the time, but you had some kind of structure implanted in you at a young age that you knew what, how far to go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that nigga ain't had no limits. I, so knew what this, I knew what the switch was. Hell yeah. Definitely, man. I got a big ass tree outside the crib. Hell <laughs> yeah. And I, like, I hope that people don't take this wrong, but if they do, man, this is, you gotta go take that up with yourself. You gotta go stand in the mirror. When you look in the mirror, you only see yourself. That's what you got to change. When you look in the mirror, you got you change the way you act. You will start changing the way you see shit around you. You gonna start changing the people you be around. You gonna only want to be around people who like minded. Somebody who want to be progressive. Somebody who got ambitions to be here tomorrow and not just be here tomorrow, but be productive while you're here. This fantasy shit, this, this social media, this toxic shit. It's toxic. We talk about it all the time. I like it for what it is. I'm not over consumed by it. Maybe it's forcing it because I'm a bit older. Uh, I have a hard time feeling I ought to be acting like they was. Man, I have some angry moments on social media, but damn. Not get killed for the crowd. You know what I'm saying? And my final trick. You know what I'm saying? That's your final act, nigga. That is your final act. You have no fucking legacy outside of legacy of the fucking jester. This is a tragic comedy. You know what I'm saying? That's that's his legacy. And it's unfortunate that these two men had to go out like this. But this is where we at. We had to be more cognizant of it in, in any any manner, any form, any fashion. And it safe travel to both of them. You know what I'm saying? I pray the most I come and get us soon. Get us about this place. And we establish this, but that's the kind of mentality that you want. Like, he wasn't going to the kingdom anyway. Not with that mentality. That nigga was reckless. I'm not about being wilderness with this fucking idiot. I would have stoned him. <laughs> I would have stoned him. If the police didn't get him, somebody was going to get him. And that's fucked up. Y'all got anything y'all say? Um, uh, on the topic or just in general? Y'all just be safe out there as everything start opening back up, man. All I be safe, you know, people still gonna probably be acting crazy. Everything gonna be yeah, overloaded. Yeah. The club yeah, probably gonna be overloaded. Home, bitch, been in the house. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not anxious to get out. Don't go down 38th Street at night time on the week. Travel, yeah. that's a long yeah. way. But get back in the mountains, you know, get Where away from it? everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. all I do when I travel. Yeah. Get away from everybody. Go to the mountains. And get... I ain't got mountains here, man. It's cool mm -hmm. just looking at something different. Yeah, I'm ready to get back to. We about to wrap this up, man. We we done went long. Uh, oh, safe travels, man. We gotta say another safe travel to the greats, uh, Little Richard and uh, Jerry Stiller. Wait a minute. First, we up to Jerry Stiller. <laughs> For now, we got <laughs> we gotta get everybody. All right then. Woo, shut up, oh, <laughs> Little Richard. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Peace to Betty Wright. Betty Peace Wright. to Andre Carrell. Oh, man. And it's hard for me to say bye to a ninety-year-old white man. But peace to Jerry Stiller. <laughs> peace to Jerry Stiller. He was hilarious and shit. Uh, what, what was he on? Everything. King of Queens. What he on Seinfeld too? Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. He had a hell of a fucking uh, filmography. You know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. was a great, a great talent. And these are all great talents. Um, man, oh, yeah. you gonna listen to Betty Wright? Man, hey, she used to try to keep them girls in line. Like, man, you are a hoe. Go listen to that song. <laughs> you are a hoe. Go listen to that. She's good on her shit. You remember hearing that shit growing up? Nigga. I didn't know she was, on, she was that young. She's relatively young. You know what I'm saying? 66. Wow. Whatever. But again, say travels to them, man. And you now those are legacies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Still, right? Andre Harrell, he's like the architect for so many hip hop and uh, R&B careers. They left legacies they can be proud of. You know what I'm saying? And whether it's a million people proud of you or one, you want one person to be proud of you. Not one person be sad for you, because that's just another thing. We, but you want to make somebody be like, he really changed my life. Yeah, they didn't just do it for the grand. Yeah, that was too old. Had they came out now, though. <laughs> Betty Robert been on that twerking. <laughs> <laughs> no pain, no gain. But no, nah, uh, again, no disrespect intended to anybody. 
it's just a state of the culture is fucked up and we need structure. We don't need hugs. We need fucking slaps and kicks and punches. We got to toughen up. We got to, we raise in the victim culture. Every time somebody do something to us, we want to claim victim. When we can be more proactive and just be righteous. You know what I'm saying? You carry yourself in a right way nine times out of ten, you will not end up like Sean Reed. Yeah. Beat ten times out of ten. If you got to beat the discipline into the head to prevent them from being what? killed in the street, then do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. What's going on? Y'all anything coming up? Any uh, social media uh, battles? Second yeah. mixtape coming up. Just know that. And once it's the city open up, TCK gonna be flooding the system, y'all. Just know that. Just know that we gonna have projects coming. We definitely gonna have projects, more projects, projects coming. So y'all just be ready for it. I mean, it's been cool chilling, but I'm it's ready time. to get back though. I'm ready it's to get back. To my hands is yeah, my hands is ready to do some damage out here, out. man. I'm gonna probably try to check out a comedy club. The uh, I'm gonna try to see if I get a ticket to that comedy club that's opening up on um, on Friday. Just Ooh. to see. Where? I just want to see. Where? It's uh in Greenwood. It's called it's Gunnels. Gunnels. Scout Club. And it's uh they say they're doing 40 seats. And I was just like, man, that's gonna <coughs> be fucking weird. You ain't trying to reach out to nobody. What for that show? No, I just know one of the guys who actually headlined. Send me the info, man. I'm sorry. I'm about to start playing manager. Yeah. I'm trying to get Trey on there with Epic and shit. Epic going to tell me to send in the fucking uh, podcast link, and then they ain't respond to me. Okay. I'll go out there with an the order. Yeah, they don't have to. <laughs> they don't understand. We're short, but they front up. I'll fuck it up. Uh, Juvie right. been back in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Get, get ready. Oh, yeah. yeah. Super Juvie. I'm going to be fighting before the gym. Send me that date, man. We gotta see this. Yeah, I'm gonna be fighting pretty soon. What else? We gotta see just super super. Super. Yeah, super. 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 I seen the video. I'm excited, man. I'm seeing a lot of videos. I'm super excited. Yeah, man, we cooking. Gotta cook up. Start planning my uh, little comeback because he gotta start promoing and doing all that stuff. He gotta do it real clear so the ticket sales boom. Mm. <laughs> it's almost time to turn the fuck up. Man, it's so. time, man. Well, we're going to take y'all out, man, next Tuesday, uh, the most dangerous podcast. You never heard of the conceited nobody. We definitely will be back in the building. Thank everybody for rocking with us, how often you rock with us. If you share this, we appreciate you. Uh, we'll be back next week. Shout out again to Young Wong for sending that fantastic song. We definitely look forward to working with you. Keep grinding. Uh, the guys up here really like the... Um, the uh, Fiend song. Uh, Fiend and his fire, bro. We definitely gonna be, push that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. hot. That's hot. And again, shout out to everybody who rock with us. The Conceited Nobody. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m.